Hello, this is Matt from TracyandMatt.co.uk. I'm from Unboxings.com, and here I am with the Lenovo Idea Tab A3000. Good, quick unboxing video for you, and a little preview before we go ahead and do our full review. So, taking the tablet out of the box, it's immediately on top. We're going to come back to that in a second. We just want to see what other accessories we have. Also, so we have the Quick Start Guide, which is pretty small. We then have a USB to micro USB sync charge cable, a UK 3 pin plug with a standard USB connector on the bottom, obviously for charging her up. And that's pretty much it, that's all we have in the box itself. So turning the tension back to the tablet, which we'll just take out. So this is a seven inch Android tablet, seven inch display, is uh, actually an IPS display uh, running at uh, 600 by 1024 pixels and obviously if you're that way around it's 1024 by 600. Uh, on the front we have a 300,000 um, pixel camera, 0.3 megapixel forward facing camera, loudspeaker on top, full capacitive touch screen as I say is a 7 inch display. On the side, nothing to see around the left hand side and on the bottom really not a great deal to see, there's a little hole there which is presumably a microphone and up onto the right hand side we just really have an up and down volume control on the top the power button the 3.5mm headphone jack notice that we didn't get any headphones in, in the box but uh, I don't know if that's uh, you know something that you just don't get but uh, in, indeed there is a 3.5mm headphone connector on top and then the micro USB sync charge connector on the back we have a 5 megapixel uh, camera for obviously taking just as straightforward photos um, and it's an autofocus camera. Now, back cover does just slide off like so and we have here space for a micro SD HC memory card which will support up to um, 64 gig memory cards. Now the model I have here is Wi-Fi only but indeed there is a Wi-Fi and 3G model um, but this as I say is just the Wi-Fi only and way around pop the back cover on battery is fixed in place uh, but indeed it is actually a 3500 milliamp hour battery which is apparently good for around 7 hours of Wi-Fi web browsing and around 2 weeks of uh, standby so let's just power up. While that's doing that, let me run down the rest of the spec. It's a quad-core quad -core processor running at 1.2 gigahertz, which we'll do a little benchmark on in a moment. Uh, three megapixel, no, 300,000 pixel, 0.3 megapixel autofocus front camera, and five megapixel rear camera. Seven inch display, as I say, is an IPS display, multi-touch capacitive. We're running Android 4.2 Jelly Bean. Internal memory, we have one gigabyte of RAM and a four gigabyte of internal storage, which, as I say, is expandable with the micro SDHC memory card on the back, it's up to 64 gig. Dimensions: 164 millimeters from top to bottom, 121 sorry, 120 millimeters wide, and 11 millimeters thick. Not the slimmest, it has to be said, of uh, tablets, but it's not too hefty either, and very easy to hold in just one hand, like so. It's 345 grams. Again, not the heaviest, not the lightest, it's pretty midstream when it comes to actually size uh, and proportions. The 3G model uh, is 2G, 3G and is dual SIM, but as I say, this is the Wi-Fi only model. Other things that we have on here, we have Wi-Fi supporting 802.11 BG and N standards, wi uh, Bluetooth 4.0, GPS with assisted GPS, and finally accelerometer for or G sensor and an ambient light sensor. I think that pretty much covers the specification. And take a quick look in terms of what we have installed. So we have a familiar Android interface um, for tablet. So we have a launcher on the top. And we can see all the installed applications, uh, which looks fairly straightforward. There's some other bits and pieces here like the Lenovo, Norton Mobile. There's a movie studio and Lenovo Register. Uh, there's other things like video players and Zinio. And uh, then we have our widgets. 
Evernote is pre-installed, the UI introduction there as well, and a few other bits and pieces. Uh, if we go back home, obviously you can see that the home screen has been populated with a few straightforward um, and example widgets. So we've got weather, calendar, media, uh, which is basically a folder, uh, notes by the looks of that, social folder and tools folder, below that Play Store, Gmail, Maps, Browser, Calendar and Gallery. Swiping across we have a couple of empty panels and yeah there are five in total with only the middle one populated. So let's go ahead and uh, go into settings, that's recent apps, that's back and uh, one of those I thought would have been a settings menu. Nope, okay so it must be in here. So we'll go to settings and we're going to go ahead and join a Wi-Fi network. And I'm going to do that now. As you can see, a decent size QWERTY keyboard in the portrait orientation and obviously even larger in the landscape orientation. We'll go ahead and sign in. So we'll go ahead and connect. So it's really we ought to probably be using it this way around. There we go. And we are indeed connected. Got a few notifications at the top. Norton product launcher and reg registration reminder. And obviously it makes a little bit more sense to use a tablet in the landscape orientation. We'll go and take a quick look at the web browser and rather than going to Lenovo site, sorry Lenovo, we're going to go to ours. Google it. There we go, so page is loading. Loading pretty fast, obviously using a broadband and Wi-Fi connection. But uh, page is loaded pretty quickly, smooth to scroll, seems to read quite well actually. Well we've got a 1024 width there in the landscape orientation, the text is nice and easy to read. Obviously it doesn't compete with um, retina type displays and very high res displays but it's a very good job at rendering that and it's quite pleasant to look at and for you know, two handed or single handed web browser um, it looks and works quite well, so pretty pleased with that. And obviously, we can switch back to the portrait orientation and indeed back to landscape, so that works quite well. So, come back out of there, uh, take a quick look at maps and see if the GPS has managed to pick up uh, anything just now, which it may or may not have. Oh, I need to enable that. Oh, I can't be bothered. <laughs> so we'll come back out of there. Um, obviously got the Gmail and the Play Store there. Uh, gallery, let's see if we have anything already in there. Any sample? No sample images. Okay, so the, next to the Play Store. And we'll use an existing account and I will just go and sign in. Okay, and we'll sign in. Should take a moment or two. Go. Right, so I'm going to do a quick search for Quadrant. And we'll go and install Quadrant Standard. Quickly download. Hopefully, it will quickly download. In the corner, we've got some other notifications uh, telling me that we're connected to Wi Fi. Uh, the battery is 99%, Bluetooth off, is GPS is off, well that would be the reasons why that wouldn't work a minute ago. Um, we can display data usage and so on. We'll just uh, wait for that to, there we go, it's installed and we'll open it. So, let's quickly run a full benchmark just to give us an idea of the performance of the quad-core 1.2 GHz processor. I'm going to turn around that way so we can see what's going on. An extremely glossy display, and I know that most displays tend to be glossy these days. This one is quite reflective. I'm not sure that there's any anti-reflective coating on it, because um, there's an unusual amount of um, reflection and glare from, see our studio lights there, but there we go, never mind. We run through these benchmarks, 61 frames a second there, it's doing alright, it's not doing a bad job at all. Seems pretty smooth. I'm 
looking at around 59, 60 frames a second there as well. Again, that's pretty decent. And our final test, around 45 frames a second. So that's quite good. So let's take a look at the benchmark results. And here we go, 3,679. Would have expected a little more from the quad-core 1.2 processor, but um, we'll run a benchmark a few more times when it comes to doing the actual review. It just gives you a rough idea of uh, kind of what's going on with this tablet. It's not the be-all and end-all, the benchmark. Obviously, the actual performance that you experience in everyday use um, can vary. Okay, so what else do we have on here? Let's see if we can see some of the other things. We've got obviously the calendar, the camera. We'll take a quick look at the camera interface. Which it's teaching me how to use. Yep, 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 very good. Okay, yeah, I really don't need to see how to use that. There we go. Um, well, nothing very exciting here, so let's just bring the box back for the sake of uh, doing a quick test. So the display, and actually the camera looks quite good in terms of what it looks like on screen. Um, if you can really make that out, it seems to be doing quite a good job. Focus working quite well. Take a quick snap. And uh, that's not too terrible at all. Compression's perhaps a little high, but the uh, picture is not bad. And obviously we can take a little bit of video as well, so not the most sophisticated of camera interfaces, but nevertheless, not too bad at all. Let's go back into the portrait orientation. I want to see if there is anything else on here that's unusual. Got a file manager there, which is useful to be installed. Logo power settings, telling us what the standby available. The battery capacity is at the moment, so that's quite good. Got a clock, play movies, uh, family, film on family, that's quite cool. Game, Titanium, Rara, Skype's pre-installed, and Zinio. Well, I think we'll draw our unboxing video to a close at that point. Uh, this has been the Lenovo IdeaTab A3000. We will have a full review for you over the next couple of weeks. In fact, Gareth is probably going to be the one to do our review because he is the uh, Android tablet wizard. Uh, and certainly the big fan of Android tablets, so Gareth will probably do our full review. So this has been the Lenovo Idea Tab A3000. If you want to follow us on Twitter, please do so. It's twitter.com slash Tracy and Matt, or facebook.com slash Tracy and Matt dot And if you want to ask us any questions about uh, this tablet or indeed any of the other Lenovo products, now that we are on the Lenovo Insiders program, please do so. We'll do our best to answer your questions. And I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracyandmat.co.uk. But for now, thanks for watching.